And everybody said, I welcome everyone who falls to the workers' training session tonight in Jesus' name. I pray it will be a time of renewal, a time of revival, and a time of the word penetrating your heart in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you tonight and use you as a channel of blessing to multitudes of people. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing already in every life. And thank you for what you're doing in the life of your children, your servants, and the people of God. We're asking you today that the word will be clear, clearer than ever to every one of us in Jesus' name. And I pray there be an impartation on every life. And Lord, you send us forth to prepare the people of God for the second coming of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Good, good, amen before you sit down. God bless you. Tonight we're coming to the word of God. It's Luke chapter 1. And in Luke chapter 1, we're reading from verse 68. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. In verse 69, it says, And he has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Verse 70, it tells us, As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which he has which have been since the beginning of the world, since the world began. Verse 71, that he should save, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. And then in verse 72, it says, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. 73, the oath that is swear to our father Abraham. 74, that he would grant unto us that we have been delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear. 75, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Verse 77, in 77, and to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of sins. 79, in 79, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. It's talking primarily about John the Baptist, the herald and the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. They want to come and prepare the way of the Lord for the first coming of Christ. But then it's applicable to us because we are the people living in these last days. And in these last days, we need to prepare the way of the Lord for his second coming. We're preparing the way of the Lord for his second coming. And that's the topic we're looking at today. Prepare the way for Christ's second coming. A challenge to every believer. A challenge to every member of the church. A challenge to every Christian worker. Every Christian soul winner. A challenge to every minister, every preacher, and every pastor. To prepare the way of the Lord for Christ's second coming. We know that the Lord is coming again. In many verses of scripture, both Old Testament and New Testament, we're told that Christ is coming again. The prophets of old declared he is coming again. He came for the first time to sacrifice and to give his life a ransom, to give his life a sacrifice for the redemption of humanity. He's coming the second time 
to establish a kingdom and to reign over the world he'll first of all come and rapture the saints away he will take the children of god away without seeing death like it happened to enoch like it happened to elijah and then jesus christ went up we're told the trumpet will sound and the dead in christ shall rise and we which are alive will be raised up together caught up together to be with them and so shall we ever be with the lord now we need to prepare the people of god and prepare the church of the living god to be a righteous a righteous church a glorious church waiting for the coming of the lord and then when he comes we're ready and then we go with him that preparation like John did and he pre prepared the way for his first coming that preparation is what the church is about now is doing now ought to do now and you and i as christians you and i as soul winners you and i as evangelists you and i as that now says the proclaimers of the coming of the lord we need to be diligent in preparing for the coming of the lord prepare the way for christ's second coming we're told in luke chapter 3 reading from verse 4 luke chapter 3 reading from verse 4 as it is written in the book of the word of the of the words of Isaiah the prophet saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord make his path straight make his path straight the path of, of the way to righteousness to salvation to heaven that had been modeled up by the false prophets by the ignorant preachers now we prepare the way we will straighten out the way we level the way and make the path straight so that the people who want to walk on that path they walk on the right path on the narrow path that leads to the kingdom of god it tells us in verse 5 it says in verse 5 every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth the rough ways shall be made smooth the pharisees made the way rough and the Sanhedrin made the way rough, the Sadducees made the way rough, the false preachers made the way rough, and the false prophets made the way rough. But now you come, now I come, now we come, and we straighten the path, and we smooth the pathway so that the people that go in their right will not have any stumbling block, any stumbling stone, will not have any rough, uh, hilly place. They'll be able to move on straight and know what it means to walk in the way of the Lord, in the path of the Lord that leads to life everlasting. Then in verse 6 it says, And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. That's the intention of God, that's the plan of God. People ought to be saved because if they are not saved before the coming of the Lord, they'll miss the rapture and they'll miss going into the kingdom and they will miss the fellowship of the Lord in eternity as well as in the kingdom. So we make the path straight and we make the crooked path as smooth so that the people will know how to repent, will know how to believe in the Lord and then will know how to remain steadfast in the Lord until the Lord will come as they see all flesh, all people, in all nations, in all cities, in the whole world, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. In Malachi chapter 4, reading from verse 5, it tells us what will happen before the coming of the Lord. It tells us what the Lord expects the Elijahs of today and the heralds of today and the soul winners of today to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord said behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord obviously that is referring to the second coming of the Lord the first coming of the Lord for salvation for healing for deliverance and for the goodness of God for the grace of God to come into the lives of people there wasn't any great and dreadful day but it is the coming of the Lord because when he comes and he takes the saints home 
there will be the great tribulation a tribulation is suffering that had never been since the beginning of the world but there will be that great and terrible day of the Lord but we need to prepare the people in the power in the strength of the spirit of Elijah before Christ comes behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord look at verse 6 it says in verse 6 and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children that's conversion conversion we preach salvation we preach repentance and we preach regeneration so that the minds of the people the hearts of the people can be converted and it says he by the preaching he by the declaration and then the soul winners of the people that live before the coming of the lord will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest i come and smite the earth with a curse as you look at those uh, verses of scripture you see that our target our goal our dream our vision is the coming of the lord and then our assignment our duty responsibility is to prepare the people of god for the second coming prepare the way for christ's second coming the three things we're looking at in the message number one persuasive preaching to hearts by rekindled soul winners the soul winners who are set on fire again the soul winners who rise up with the spirit and the power and the fire of elijah the prophet in these last days and then we go forth we're preaching persuasive preaching to hearts we're talking to the hearts of men we're not talking to their head we're not talking to their intellect we're talking to their hearts so that their hearts will grip and grasp and receive the word of god and then that will prick them that will persuade them and that will make them to call upon the name of the lord and be saved persuasive preaching to hearts but rekindled so by rekindled so winners number two now is personal preparation in holiness by rapturable saves we don't want to be like the people that send passengers to the bus and then we ourselves will remain back at the car park at the motor park we want to also go in the rapture and you know that without holiness no man shall see the lord and blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god and that he will deliver us from our enemies that we might serve him serve god in without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives we need that experience and we need to personally prepare in holiness so that when the saints are raptured we'll be part of the raptured saints in jesus name somebody is there to say amen, amen. personal preparation in holiness by rapturable saints number three proof producers of harvest for the returning savior the lord is returning the savior is returning our king is coming back again and we need to be people who are investors and we need to approve for our harvest which will be proof producers of harvests for our returning savior let's come to number one now number one is persuasive preaching to hearts by rekindled soul winners it tells us in um, in um, luke chapter one reading from verse 77 luke chapter one verse 77 to give the knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of sins our duty our responsibility our calling is that we go out and preach the word and as we preach the word we're given the knowledge of salvation understand that not just the general knowledge of scripture 
the general knowledge of spirituality, the general knowledge of a good life, the non general knowledge of Bible history, the general knowledge of, a, of intellect. It is the, in, the knowledge of the salvation of the Lord, the salvation that Christ has come to give, the salvation that prepares us for the coming of the Lord, the salvation that makes us live in newness of life with our soul winners, rekindled, regenerated, refired. We are to go out and give the knowledge of salvation unto his people, and through that they have the remission of of sins. I want you to look at uh, Luke chapter 3. I'm looking at verse 3. Luke chapter 3 verse 3. And he came into all the country about Jordan preaching, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Preaching. That's our responsibility. That's what we need to do. That we need to go out like John the Baptist, like the Herald, like the Forerunner, and he preached the knowledge of salvation by repentance and remission of sins, the redemption of their soul. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it tells us, and all flesh shall see. That is, as he preaches that word of salvation, as he preaches the gospel, all flesh, all the people is preaching to, they will have no doubt in their mind. They'll have no shadow of doubt of what he's talking about. It's not talking about politics. It's not talking about the world becoming better. It's not talking about any other thing. It's talking about every individual hearing his word, hearing the message from him. They're hearing the word of the salvation of God. The salvation that comes from God. The salvation that comes through Christ and the salvation that comes with the gospel all flesh shall see the salvation of God look at Acts chapter 8 in Acts chapter 8 we find that the responsibility of every billion and the responsibility of all children of God is that we will preach the word in fact in that early church all the people went about preaching preaching the word look at Acts chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 4 therefore they that was scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word underline that preaching the word look at verse 5 in verse 5 it tells us then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them the emphasis of our duty and the emphasis of our calling the emphasis of our ministry is preaching and Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ unto them in verse 12 it says but when they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom Philip preaching preaching things concerning the kingdom repent ye believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand and to enter that kingdom somebody ought to be preaching somebody ought to be hearing and then as they believe what they hear then they are able to enter into the kingdom preaching things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and they, when they are testified and preached the word of the Lord, they, referring to Peter and John, when they finished what they came to do in Samaria, everywhere they went, they returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. They preach the gospel, the saving gospel. They preach that gospel in many villages of the Samaritan. Verse 33, it, it tells us in verse 35. Verse 35 also tells us, verse 35, And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Do you see in that Acts chapter 8 that, you know, verse 4, and then verse 5, and then verse 12, and then verse 25, and now verse 35. All we're talking about is preaching the occupation of the people, the preoccupation of the people, the concentration of the people, 
preaching and then he tells us in verse 40 in verse 40 he says but philip was found at Asotos, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now, everybody knows, I think, what it means to preach. And many of us have gone out, were preached to individuals, were preached in a house fellowship, were preached to a local congregation, were preached to maybe a large congregation. But what does it really mean as we're talking about preparing the way of the Lord and preparing the people to, to come into the gospel, preparing their hearts, preparing their mind, and preparing them to take a decision, a decision that uh, leads them to salvation. We're going to use the letters of the word preach. P is to persuade. Persuade. If you're preaching to somebody, it's not just that you're talking. It's not just that you're telling a story. It's not just that you're talking about Christ. You're talking, you're saying something that eventually will push the person to decision. You persuade him. R is to rehearse, rehearse. That means uh, when we say rehearse, you are retelling the story of Jesus. The story of Jesus who came from heaven. The story of Jesus who lived a perfect life. The story of Jesus who died on the cross of Calvary. The story of Jesus who rose again. You retell the story. You rehearse the story so that the person you are talking to will know that this is the story and this is the fact I need to believe so that I can be saved. P, persuade. R is to rehearse. E is to enlighten. Many people are spiritual darkness and they do not know. They know about religion. They know about tradition. They know about what they do in their denomination, but they do not really know. They are in the dark as to what do I do? How can I be saved? How can I be very sure that I'm a real child of God and I know that I know that I'm born again? We need to enlighten them. A is to appeal. Appeal. After you have told the story of Christ, after you have enlightened them, they must take a decision. Just hearing something you know, that we call preaching without taking a decision is a waste of time. And therefore, you appeal, you appeal to them so they can take a decision. And after that appeal, if they're still sluggish and, and long and uh, lingering, then you compel them, compel them to come into the kingdom by your word, by your persuasion by telling them how urgent it is and by telling them if they are not saved this is what will happen to them eventually you compel them and then age is to help their faith if they're still sin, i'll think about it i will i don't know what this will mean how i, I will give my life to the lord and my life will be changed you help their faith you help them to believe and you persuade them so that they will come into the kingdom let's look at them briefly one by one p in preaching is to persuade look at second corinthians chapter 5 verse 11 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 11 knowing therefore the terror of the lord will persuade men if you know hell is real, we persuade men. If you know judgment is coming, we persuade men. If you know that we don't have any time to waste now, it's the day of salvation. And they must take their stand now. You persuade them, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men, but were made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Are we rehearse, we rehearse, we rehearse the story of redemption, the story of how Christ died, how Christ was buried, and how Christ rose again for justification. We're told in Acts chapter 11, reading from verse 4, Acts 11 verse 4, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them. 
as we talk to the sinner, we rehearse, we tell him as if he has never heard. He has doubts in his mind. He has some misgivings about the Lord that went to the cross, and they will rehearse the story unto them. God created man perfect. Man fell, and because of that, all his offspring also fell, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and by the works of the Lord shall no flesh be saved. You cannot do it by turning over a new limb, but Christ has come, that thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And to have that salvation, he had to pay the price. He had to die on the cross of Calvary and be a sacrifice for us. And then he was buried. On the third day, he rose again for our justification. And he said, it is finished. Everything we need for salvation, everything is now accomplished. What do you need to do now? Repent and believe on the Lord and you'll be saved. We rehearse the story and we rehearse it but in order. We rehearse it logically. We rehearse it convincingly that the people will come to the Lord in verse 18. It tells us in verse 18 when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God saying then as God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. P is to persuade and R is to rehearse. E is to enlighten, enlighten. We're looking at Psalm 19 and reading from verse 7. In Psalm 19 verse 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The testimony of the Lord, when you give the testimony of how Christ died, and Christ is now our Savior. All they have to do is believe that word of the Lord, that gospel of the Lord will convert the soul. It will make the simple, the foolish, it will make them wise unto salvation. Look at verse 8. It says, The statute of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes, enlightening the eyes. You open their eyes to the truth of salvation and you'll say, I never heard that before. I didn't know that before. I've been reading that same scripture. I didn't understand but now I understand that Jesus is Savior. There's no other name given among men whereby we can be saved but the name of Jesus and then to appeal to them. Appeal appeal to them. We don't just leave them appreciating the story and loving the story and they're going home saying, I now understand that. I now understand. You appeal to them to take a decision. We're coming to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 18. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given unto us the ministry of of reconciliation the ministry of reconciliation in verse 19 it says in verse 19 to which that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself and not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation look at verse 20 now it says now then we as ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. We're appealing to them, please don't go away without taking a decision. Please don't go away. Your salvation is available, and the Lord can save you now and write your name in the book of life. Now I appeal to you that you will not neglect this. You will come to the Lord and the Lord is available here and is here to save you. Now is the time we're making them, we're compelling them, compelling them by love, we compel them because of the urgency of the matter, we compel them. Because if they don't give their lives to the Lord, now that you are talking to them, persuading them, 
rehearsing to them the story of the cross enlightening them appealing to them if they don't give their lives to the lord now we don't know what will happen to them tomorrow that's why by your love and by the earnestness and urgency you compel them to come in in luke chapter 14 verse 23 luke chapter 14 verse 23 and the lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in don't come back empty and dead go back there go and tell them compel them to come in don't listen to any excuse answer all their questions and deflate all the excuses compel them to come in don't be in a hurry and say i have to go back home and do something stay there and compel them to come in until they make a decision until they turn until they believe and until they give their lives to the lord you're not going to leave them alone compel them to come in that my house may be filled now you need to help them acts of the apostles chapter 18 acts of the apostles chapter 18 you help their faith you help them to believe you give your own testimony you tell them how easy it is to believe and how they will trust in the lord help them help their faith we're looking at acts chapter 18 verse 27 and when he was disposed to pass into a the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him here is apollos who when he was calm he helped them much which had believed through grace he helped them much which had believed through grace by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of god help them to understand what that faith is that will hold on to the lord what that faith is that will believe for eternal life what that faith is that will believe and then they'll cross over into the kingdom and after they have believed and they have the assurance they are born again help them much to continue in the faith in second corinthians chapter 1 verse 24 second corinthians chapter 1 reading from verse 24 not that we have dominion over your faith but our helpers of your joy their joy in the lord their joy of salvation will help us of their joy for by faith ye stand that's what it means to go to the sinners out there and to preach unto them that's what it means to go to the sinners out there and to declare the gospel unto them p you persuade them how would you think if somebody is talking to you just uh, tagging some verses of Peter together but you are not persuaded they understand and premeditate when you are going to go to them how do i so present the gospel of salvation that the people i'm talking to will be persuaded pr you rehearse the story of the cross and the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ what he did and how he did it to give us eternal life you enlighten them you open their eyes that they will behold the salvation of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, and the doings of the Lord. You enlighten them, you appeal to them. Yours is salvation for the claiming. Christ died for you. I'm appealing to you. I'm begging of you. This is the day of your salvation. And then you talk to them until they accept. You compel them to come into the kingdom. Your help their faith and i pray that as we do this and we preach intelligently and preach convincingly and preach persuasively i pray that many of the people you are talking to they'll come to know the lord in jesus name let me hear a good headquarters amen point number two now point number two personal preparation in holiness by rapturable saints personal preparation as we're talking to others 
as you're ministering to others, as you're helping others, you yourself, you want to be ready. You want to be ready for his coming. Ready that whenever he will come, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, when we're all asleep, all of a sudden he comes, you'll be ready in Jesus' name. We're coming to Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 73. Luke chapter 1, verse 73, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham in verse 74, that he would grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hand hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. Hold on. You know, the children of Israel at the time of John the Baptist, they were not delivered from fear. And yet the plan of God, the purpose of God is to deliver them from fear, the fear of serving their enemies. At the time of Jesus Christ, this oath was not fulfilled for them. Why? Because they rejected Jesus Christ and they were still under the Roman rule, under their enemies, and they were suffering under foreign government because they did not accept the preaching of John and the preaching and the offer of the Lord Jesus Christ that we might serve him it says that we might serve him without fear in verse 75 it says in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life it didn't happen to Israel as a nation because they rejected the one who was to bring the salvation and bring the holiness and bring the righteousness and bring the upright life the promises of God are yes and amen, but you must believe, you must accept, and you must embrace, you must say, I accept the Lord, I receive the Lord, and I receive the promise he has given. The promise of holiness, the promise of sanctification is there for the church, every member of the church, but if the members of the church do not believe, do not accept, do not embrace, like the Israelites and the time of Jesus did not accept then we're not going to have the promise fulfilled but the promise is ours so that at the coming of the Lord there'll be righteousness there'll be holiness and as we believe we'll have what it takes to be ready for the Lord in Jesus name now as we talk about this holiness to remember the word of God in Hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 14 it says follow peace with all men follow peace with all men because you know the things we argue about and the things we are in conflict about and the things we fight about those things are so small those things are so insignificant to be compared with heaven and to be compared with the place we're going and if we know that the place we're going heaven is very important then we drop all the things we fight about and we follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It tells us in Matthew chapter 5 reading from verse 8 Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 he said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God you will see God the Lord will so purify your heart there will be nothing a wall of demarcation there will be nothing a hindrance between you and seeing the Lord on the final day in Jesus name now it's a wonder to be ready for the coming of the Lord and the Lord is telling us here we're talking about personal preparation what kind of preparation number one preparation for the wonder of his second coming preparation for the wonder of his second coming number two is preparation for the wonder of steadfast converts we go out and we reach out to those converts and the wonder of those converts be stable and steadfast and solid or movable unshakable the prep our preparation for the wonder of steadfast converts number three is a preparation for the wonder of spiritual supernatural conquest you will overcome I will overcome the power to overcome and the wonder of overcoming will be given to every one of us in Jesus name I'll say my own amen here amen 
look at this number one is the preparation for the wonder of his second coming we're looking at Luke chapter 21 reading from verse 33 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away he said I'm coming again. That's his word. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. The wonder of his second coming. Look at verse 34. It says in verse 34, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with so preaching and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. Verse 35, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Verse 36, it says, watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You'll be ready. I will be ready. First John chapter 3 from verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Then in verse 2, it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God? We believe on the Lord now. Are we the sons of God? We are converted now. Are we the sons of God? We are consecrated and committed to him and to his way now are we the sons of God we change to the same image and to the likeness of the Lord now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him he shall appear he's coming again I said it's coming again. It says, for we shall see him as he is. Remember, a preparation for the wonder of his second coming. Look at verse 3 now. It says in verse 3, and every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. I pray you'll be ready in Jesus' name. Number two here is preparation for the wonder of steadfast converts. As we go out and they will win souls to the Lord, we we'll want to make sure that they're truly converted, we want to make sure that they're truly abiding, we want to make sure they're living for the Lord. What would what, what it mean when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise up and the way which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and then to look around and no single convert of yours is there. The people you have been exchanging the word of God with, the word of salvation with, and the people that have been saying, yes, we have accepted, yes, we have accepted, and not to find one of them around you, then you go before the Lord empty-handed, shall I go and empty that handed, no soul to present before him. That's why we want to prepare for the wonder of steadfast converse. He tells us in Acts chapter 2 verse 40, Acts chapter 2 verse 40 and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this unto what generation then in verse 41 and then they that gladly received this word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls but you look at the wonder here in verse 42 it says and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers that's what you want and that's what you want for your converse that your converse will abide they will remain they will continue in the word until christ comes in jesus name the wonder of steadfast converse number three here is preparation for the wonder of supernatural conquest while we're here now we're saved now we're serving the Lord. Now we're soul winners. And we're waiting for the second coming of the Lord. There might be some battles in front of us. But we're going to conquer. 
There might be some mountains in front of us. We're going to move all those mountains. There may be some Canaanites and some Jebusites and some people that are standing in the way. And the wall of Jericho may be tall and high and thick and deep. But we're going to conquer everyone. The wonder of supernatural conquest. How are we going to do that so that we can conquer? Look at Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Joshua chapter 3 and we're looking at uh, verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do, tell me out aloud, wonders among you. Are you not opening your Bible? I'm going to read again. You get ready. You're going to tell me. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Say a good amen. amen. They were looking forward to the wonder of crossing River Jordan. Prepare yourself, sanctify yourselves. They were looking for the wonder of Gilgal when they'll be circumcised. And in that way of circumcision, when their bodies are weak, none of the Canaanites will have the power, will have the courage to cross over and handle them. They were looking for the wonder of total, maximum, perfect protection in the time of their weakness. They were looking for the wonder of those Jericho walls that have been there hundreds of years and those Jericho was no army had ever thought of the possibility of bringing those Jericho walls down they wanted that wonder they were looking for the wonder of going from city to city and conquering and capturing all those places they were looking for the wonder of occupying the land that the Lord had promised since the time of Abraham and so Joshua said to Tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow, today, today now is tomorrow. When you get to tomorrow, if there's still anything to come down, Jericho was to come down, is tomorrow. And then when Jericho was sat down, at that point, tomorrow, we're still going to go in and possess the land. Tomorrow, the Lord will walk wonders among you. And all your days from today to tomorrow to another tomorrow to another tomorrow, keep on preparing yourself. Make sure there's no dirty thing around you, there's no dirty thing within you, and there is no faithlessness within you. And by the grace of God and the strength of the Lord, as you prepare yourself, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, the Lord, tell me, <laughs> sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. The wonders are happening already. If you're connected with all these crusades that are going on now, wonders and, uh, you know, the, the leaders and those who are handling the, the uh, social media, they are telling me that testimonies are still coming in. Testimonies are still coming in. And they're coming in from all the... Oh, oh, various countries and if they're coming from everywhere your own true will come as you sanctify yourself and then you prepare yourself tomorrow tomorrow somebody shout tomorrow, tomorrow. the lord will do wonders among you in jesus name and now another tomorrow is coming we're not just taking a train now we're taking our flight to Patakot and the next time uh, we're going to have this uh, Patakot uh, global crusade and it's going to start from the uh, listen to me uh, you hear it from the horse's mouth are you listening your ears are opening are opened from the 27 don't correct me, I correct you. From the 27th, that's a Wednesday, until the 31st, that's a Sunday. Just like we had five days in uh, five days in Abuja, we're going to have uh, the crusade. We'll pack together all the, all the miracles you ever desired in your life. For your spirit, for your soul, for your body, for your family, for the, every member of your church, and for those who are at the point of almost passing on, power is coming. Showers of blessing coming. And it will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Remember, remember October 27 to 
20 to 31 wednesday to sunday five powerful days sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the lord will do wonders among you give me a mountain moving amen as you prepare you will not miss your chance in jesus name let's come to point number three now point number three is proof producers of harvest for the returning savior he's returning is coming again and he has given us work to do and we want to be proof producers when he comes we want to be able to say you give me one talent i got ten you give me one talent i got five what you have given me i put to use and i produce the fruit and the lord will say well done your reward will be great on that final day in jesus name look at luke chapter 19 verse 12 in Luke chapter 19 verse 12 he said therefore a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return to receive for himself a kingdom and to return he has gone now and then he is returning and then in verse 13 it says and is and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them occupy till i come occupy till i come don't allow any time any day and don't allow your talent and don't allow your opportunity to be wasted it says occupy till i come and then as he came back he came to ask those people what they had gained and he rewarded them he reward you in jesus name in philippians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 20 philippians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 20 is talking about for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ we're looking for him because he's going to return and then in verse 21 it says who shall change our vile body and that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the walking whereby is able even to subdue all things unto himself able to subdue all things unto himself as we are going to be proof producers of harvest for the returning savior there are three things we're looking at number one patiently waiting for the return of the lord patiently we're waiting for the return of the lord number two perseveringly working for the rewarding lord is the lord that is going to reward us and because of that we're perseveringly working for the rewarding lord and then number three plurally witnessing for the redeeming lord number one is patiently waiting for the returning lord is coming again i said it's coming again and we are waiting patiently for him we're told in hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 35 hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward and then in verse 36 for we for ye have need of patience after that ye have done the will of god that he may receive the promise then it says in verse 37 for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry he will come i said he will come I said it will come and because of that we're patiently waiting for the returning Lord in James chapter 5 verse 7 James chapter 5 verse 7 be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the Lord patiently waiting be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the Lord behold the husband man waiteth 
for the precious fruit of the earth and ask long patience for it until you receive the early and latter rain. And then in verse 9, it says, Be, be um, grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned, behold, the judge standeth at the door. That is, it's so very near and it's about to come. Therefore, you are waiting patiently for him. In Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 36, Luke chapter 12, verse 36, and ye yourselves like unto, unto the men that wait for their Lord. Men, women, believers, saints of God, children of God, that wait for their Lord, that when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. I pray you'll be ready in Jesus' name. And then in verse 37, it says in verse 37, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And then verse 38, it says, and if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so blessed are those servants. Verse 39, and this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Then verse 40 tells us, be ye therefore ready also. He's coming, be ye therefore ready also he will soon appear be ye ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour ye think not number two here is perseveringly working for the rewarding lord he is the lord that will reward us and because he will reward us that is why we're persevering in the work of the lord you know sometimes there'll be rain sometimes there'll be sunshine sometimes there'll be some difficulties in the way sometimes there'll be challenges in life but then as you are working for the lord you do not allow any challenge, any hurdle, any difficulty to stop you or to restrain you, you keep on walking, perseveringly walking for the rewarding Lord. In Revelation chapter 22 verse 12, Revelation chapter 22 verse 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. He will reward you in Jesus' name. Your faithful work, he will reward your fruitful work, it will reward. Your fearless work, it will reward in Jesus' name. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man, how many people? To give every man, I said how many people? Everyone, including you, to give every man according as his work shall be. To give every man, to give every worker, to give every servant, and to give every soul winner as his work shall be. And then in verse 13, it says, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And then in verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. That's what Adam and Eve missed. After they ate the forbidden fruit, they were driven out of the Garden of Eden so that they would not stretch out their hand and touch the fruit of the tree of life. What they missed and what they couldn't get, you will have, you will receive in Jesus' name. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. That city, everlasting city, that city, the city of joy, the city of no tears, and the city of uh, no trouble anymore, that city where we'll enter in Jesus' name. I will be there. 
I said I will be there. But then it means you are walking perseveringly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, therefore, because you know the Lord is coming, therefore, because you know he'll change our vile body to be like unto his glorious body. Therefore, because we know, I show you a mystery, we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye the trumpet shall sound and then we shall be changed and we shall be with the Lord therefore because death will be swallowed up in mystery therefore because we will be that generation that will take part in the coming of the Lord therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord always 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 Every time, always, every day, always, at every opportunity, always, every time there's a call, every time there's a soul to witness to, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, our labor is not in vain, will be rewarded in Jesus' name. And that's why you are thinking of every area of the world, how to get so saved, how to, you know, whether you are sending a text, whether you are using WhatsApp, whether you are using email, whether you, whatever, whatever thing you are using, social media or direct contact, in every way, you are preaching the word of God to the people that you have as your contacts. And you are always, always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And your reward reward will be full and your word your reward will be eternal in jesus name and let me show you one example in second kings chapter 13 second kings chapter 13 reading from verse 15 and elisha said unto him take bow and arrows and he took unto him bows and arrows so far so good look at verse 16 and he said to the king of israel put thine hand upon the bow and he put his hand upon upon it so far so good and elisha uh, and elisha put his hands upon the king's hands in verse 17 and he said open the window eastward and he opened it so far so good then elisha said shoot and he shot so far so good and he said uh, it says the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, for thou shalt smite the Syrians, and in effect shall thou have resumed uh, therein. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, uh, and he said, take the arrows, and he took them, uh, and he said to the king of Israel, look at this now, look at this now, smite upon the ground smite upon the ground and he smote thrice and stayed he smote one two three and stayed like us we go out we evangelize this house this house that house and we're stop. or we evangelize this week next week and the following week and we're stopped or we evangelize in global crusade this month, next month, another month, and we stop. The king of Israel smote three times and he stayed. Look at verse 8, 19. And the man of God was wroth, angry with him, and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Keep on striking and keep on going and keep on walking and persevering that work and keep on doing it then at thou meeting Syria till thou art consumed it if you keep on doing it you evangelize now do it again you evangelize now do it again you go to a neighbor do it again you go to another person do it again it is by doing it and doing it and doing it and it is by persevering it's by walking without looking back 
it's by walking without uh, stepping back and getting tired it's by doing it and doing it and doing it the victory total victory will come and the victory that will have no limit will come in our lives in jesus name you see most people they get the fire for one day and after two three days the fire is gone some people they get the zeal for one week and after that one week the zeal is gone there are some people they run and run they run in the way of the lord and the walk the lord has given us to do and then they are tired and then they see them but the lord is saying you should have smitten the ground five or six times then you would have conquered permanently but now you only conquer three times he said whereas now thou shall smite syria but tries i pray that our victory will not be limited your victory will not be limited and your, your soul winning and your harvesting will not be limited in jesus name but remember we must keep on doing the work that's what he told us to do he said occupy till i come not for three days occupy till i come not for three weeks occupy till i come not for three months occupy till i come put all your energy all your power all your strength everything you've got into the work and while sweating and while laboring and while even while you're almost tired you says keep on moving keep on moving and keep on doing the work and the work of the lord will prosper in your hand in jesus name number three now number three is plurally witnessing for the redeeming lord plurally plurally what does that mean plurally you know plural now it means that you're not just uh, having only one method and you're used to only that one method increase the methods increase the strategy and make it plural that you go this way and you're able to win some souls then you have another method you're able to win other souls and then you have another technique you're able to win other souls and then you have other plans you're able to win other souls and you have a plural approach to the winning of souls to the evangelization uh, the church and the workers are not being taught and how to use the social media and all those and those at that and perfect that and practice that the ones who are doing before face to face and personal contact don't forget that one don't leave that one and the other one everybody could do that you know i'm um, telephoning i'm um, texting i'm um, sending this i'm sending that with all that we're learning now and the ones we do when there was no crusade keep on doing that and the ones we do at the time of crusade plurally we witnessing and you seen all methods and you seen all techniques plurally witnessing you know, for the redeeming lord as we do that multitudes in every place through you through me through us together will come to know the lord in jesus name did somebody say amen, amen. Plurally witnessing for the redeeming Lord. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 16. Acts chapter 26, we're looking at verse 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Know the purpose of your life the purpose of your calling the purpose of being in the kingdom at such a time like this the purpose of your ministry it says stand up, up upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of the things which thou has seen look at that what thou has seen all that you have learned, all that you have known, all that has been revealed unto you until this time, all that you have seen and of those things and the which I will appear unto thee. The new things that will be revealed unto you and the new things you will learn and the new methods you will learn, the ones you knew before in the which appeared unto thee and the things you are going to learn in the things that will appear unto thee. You will make use of everything and be a minister and be a faithful soul winner and reach out to lives and reach out to people and many will come into the kingdom through you and through your efforts in jesus
Jesus' name. And look at look at the next verse there. It says in verse 17, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles to whom I now send thee. It tells us in verse 18 to open their eyes. Remember, as you're preaching, you're persuading them, you are convincing them. Remember, as you're preaching, you are rehearsing the story of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are saying, This Christ, this Jesus is the Christ. Remember, you're enlightening their eyes and you are to throwing away their uh, their darkness. And remember, you appeal to them. Are they Jews? Are they Gentiles? Are they poor? Are they rich? Are they educated? Are they illiterate? You appeal to them and then you compel them by your talking, by your smiling, and by your love, by everything you do, you, you compel them and then you help them to believe that they know that this is the day and this is the time of their salvation to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light and to, to the, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. That's the goal, that the purpose it's not just to talk, it's not just to preach. You have a purpose, you have a goal while you are ministering, why you are evangelizing, and you are producing fruit. Fruit producers, proof producers of harvest for the returning Savior. It says that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them uh, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now understand the Bible, Christ was talking to Paul. And when it says faith that is in me, is faith that is in the one talking to Paul. Faith in Christ. Read it to understand, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in Christ. We're looking at uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 15. Acts chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel understand the plural witnessing. The Gentiles, there's a way to talk to the Gentiles who don't know any scriptures. And then to the kings highly placed, there's a way to talk to them. Maybe different from the way you're talking to the Gentiles. The same message, a different method. And to the children of Israel, those who have heard about Christ, but they have not received him. That's why we say plurally witnessing for the redeeming Lord. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, we're told that, and straightway he preached Christ. That's Paul the Apostle. He got the commission and he got the calling and he got the ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. And we're told that straightway, immediately, without allowing the fire to cool down, without allowing the zeal uh, to, you know, to drop off, and without uh, allowing the fervency with him, uh, you know, to be, to be quenched or to be drowned. And he began the preaching of Christ, but persuading the people. He began rehearsing the story of the life of Jesus. He began enlightening the people on what Christ came to do and how Christ came and what he came for. He began appealing to the people. I've been like you before. I rejected this way before. I persecuted everyone that followed this way before. But now he appeared unto me and he appealed to them as I have turned around and I've been converted. You too can and come to the Lord. And he was compelling them with the scriptures and proving to them from their own scriptures that Christ is the Savior. And then he tried to help them even in prayer. He said, I could wish that myself would have been a cause from Christ because of the Jews, my kinsmen. And then he wanted them to come. I appeal to you. I plead with you. Believe on the Lord straightway. He preached Christ in the synagogue that he is 
is the Son of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. You saw the means available. You separate thing you can use so that you can gain more souls into the kingdom. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, and unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law. That I might gain them that are under the law. In verse 21, it tells us unto them that are without law that I might gain them as without law be not without law to god but under the law to christ that i might gain them that are without law not look at verse 22 here it says to the weak became i as weak that i might gain the weak i am made all things to all men that i might by all means i might by all means i might with all methods I might with different strategies, I might with different approaches, I might by all means save some. And that's the calling we have that will bring all our nets out to catch the fish, we'll bring all our hooks out to catch the fish, we'll bring all our baits out to catch the fish, and we'll bring all our friends along with us to catch the fish, and we by all means, by all methods, in all ways, and whatever strategy, we just want to make sure that nobody escapes the preaching of the gospel so that as many as possible through you through me through us together many will be saved in jesus name i believe it will happen and the fire will never die in our heart the zeal will never go off in any of our hearts and whatever we need to do however we ought to do it with whatever strategy will apply everything and sink everything we have into the work of soul winning so that many people will hear of the lord jesus christ and many will come to have him as their personal savior and lord and when the lord shall come because we know the lord is coming we will have prepared multitudes 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 for the coming of the Lord. I pray that God will count you faithful. God will find you faithful. And God will find you persevering, purposeful, and uh, perspiring until the work is done, until the Lord comes in Jesus' name. We'll rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer and tell the Lord what we have learned and how the Lord is going to use you, use me, use us together, and we'll persevere, we'll preach, we'll do everything we need to do to bring souls into the kingdom in their multitudes.